There have been two white whale sightings off the coast of Queensland this week, leaving people wondering if it could be Migaloo making his way north. Joining us live for more is wildlife scientist Dr Vanessa Perotta. Vanessa, good to see you. Thanks for your time. We haven't heard much about Migaloo for, for a while, the, the white whale that really is quite famous here in Australia. Is there any way to know for sure if these whale sightings are actually that whale that Australia fell in love with all those years ago? That's a big question, and that's what everyone at the moment is really trying to ask. Now, the reason we're asking this question is because, as you said, there was at least two reports of two individual sightings of two white whales. So is it the same white whale that has moved from one area to another? Is this Migaloo the white humpback whale who hasn't been seen for at least two years? And you can see the footage here of a, a white, predominantly white looking whale from an aeroplane that was really, what was wonderful here is that this was observed by a citizen scientist, a non-scientist, who provided this to Migaloo One via Twitter, but also migaloo.com.au. And what you can see here now is the Migaloo, but that picture there, or the, the, the footage that we saw before, could this be Migaloo? Or perhaps, could this be a upside down whale, just like the whale swimming right next to Migaloo right there? So the verdict, it, it, we're still trying to work out what it is, but it's all white whale, and what well, at least it looks like, or is it an upside down whale with it, where you can see its belly? Gosh, I didn't realise that Migaloo had its own website. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> how old would that whale be now? I mean, assuming if he's still alive, how long do whales usually live for? Well, that's a great question. Migaloo, when he was first sighted, was back in 1991 off Byron Bay. So that's Australia's most eastern point. And at the time, it was believed he was around two to even three or five years of age. So roughly speaking, Migaloo was probably of the early 30s. And being in the early 30s, that's quite a young whale, or at least in my opinion. Humpback whales can live to over 50 to even 80 years of age. But... When you are a whale transiting the ocean, you unfortunately do face a number of different threats. And so your existence might be limited to a few years if you were unfortunately struck by a vessel or if you became entangled in fishing gear. But there are a whole number of other threats that face our, our whales in the ocean and other animals. Acoustic pollution, plastic pollution, rubbish, all of these types of things. And in addition to human activities, there are also those natural unfortunate things that can pose a threat to whales and that being killer whales, that they're a natural um, predator of humpback whales. And these are just one example of both the, the natural world, but also the human world impacting these animals. So let's hope that they can live to well beyond 80 years of age, given that they're transiting in an ocean full of a, a variety of different things that can harm them. Oh, we all hope so. I mean, they are just such remarkable creatures. These, these pictures are, are, are gorgeous. Um, how rare is the white whale? Are they under threat? Well, the humpback whales that we see off the east and the west coast of Australia are doing quite well in their numbers, which is a good thing. But the, the chances of seeing a white humpback whale is very low. So we don't know how many white humpback whales there are in all the world's populations of humpback whales. But at least in the east coast... We would say that, well, we know of Migaloo, but potentially there are other white humpback whales or whales that, well, we know Migaloo does have albinism and he is a male through genetic testing, so that's great to know. But there, there is other potential white whales out there. For example, we found through social media that there was a white humpback whale calf off the coast of Costa Rica last year. So is this animal going to remain completely white? We know that some whales, when they're born, like the southern right whales, they can be born kind of looking salt and peppery-like. And then as they get older, they darken. But at least in the humpback whale world and the east coast population of where we're likely to see Migaloo, or potentially he can be seen in New Zealand waters, we at least know of one humpback whale that is completely white, and that is the Migaloo. But there are other humpback whales that are mostly white. In fact, there were reports from Port Macquarie today of about an 80% white whale. So there you go. Okay, all right, good to hear. How much tracking do we do of, of whales? How much surveillance is there as they travel around the globe? Well, that's such a great question because there are dedicated people right now on a cliff and on boats trying to see whales and trying to see as many as they can. So through citizen science, we can really get an idea of how many or potentially how many we're likely to see over a certain period of time. 
but it's real systematic studies where you've got dedicated scientists in an area tracking these whales over a period of time can help build us an idea of just how many there are. And at least in this population, the east coast population of humpback whales, there is over 35,000. But in terms of the exact number of how many whales there are, I don't think anyone in the world, or at least in this population, I don't think anyone in the world would be able to tell you how many there are because whales, they're very big, they're the biggest animals on earth, but they tend to move around a lot. And so you can't ask them to do a bit of a roll call to tell you how many individuals there are at one time because, well, the majority of their life is underwater. So the times in which we can count them is only through a small window of opportunity, especially on the East Coast. And that would be when they're in Australian waters for those winter months. And when we look at the whale, whale migration on at the moment, for any citizen scientists listening to this interview, where's the best place to spot them and, and just how long does that whale watching season really go for? We typically see whales in Australian waters on the east and the west coast population, on the both sides rather, east and west coast, two different populations from at least May, but a little bit earlier than that, people reporting sightings a lot earlier. We'll see these whales from, from now on all the way to potentially into November. So the other thing is you do not need to be on a boat to see a whale, but if you are, you do need to keep your distance of at least 100 metres, as well as that flying drone. So if you're whale, whale watching from land, that's often a great place to do, and it's a great one because you don't need a boat, but if you're whale watching from land, you just need a good headland, even a beach, good conditions, very much like behind me right now, um, and you need to be able to have good weather where you can see out very wide. I will also point out, if you're flying a drone, please keep at least 100 metres above the whales and don't go any lower just to keep them safe but also to keep you safe as well. So the good news is whales and dolphins are all protected in Australian waters, but we, in our, in our attempts to learn more about them and to enjoy them, we must give them their space. Some good tips there, Dr. Vanessa Perotta. Always appreciate you making the time and keep us posted. We'd love to know if it is Migaloo off the coast at the moment. We'll be keeping a, a watch on that over the season. Thanks so much. Thank you.